Hello, I'm Dow Bartley, and I certainly hope that you and yours are enjoying, in every way, a brighter summer day. Well, the older I am, the more that I think. And I'm thinking of a word that in the past wasn't used as much, but when it was, I think it had a different meaning than today. The word I'm thinking of is influencer, an influencer. Now today, I may be wrong, but my interpretation of today's use is that it is more of a social media type of a, a title, if you want to call it that, and it's a numbers game. How many numbers can I get up as, fo as followers and then moving on to be an influencer? Particular, I guess, in something called TikTok. I do not uh, have that. But in the past, and the older I am, the more that I think, and I'm thinking about the past, so humor me, please. And when I use the term influencer, I'm thinking of its use in the past. Let me give you some examples. As a teenager, indeed, we had influencers like the radio AM station. And on that, maybe listen to KOMA, Oklahoma City, or WLS Chicago. Now, at a certain point, point of time on WLS Chicago, when you tuned it in, you could listen to, yes, I would call him an influencer, George Carlin, the hippy dippy weatherman, que pasa, que, how's your pasa? And he had a different uh, philosophy of kind of looking at things. You're a hippy dippy weatherman. <laughs> hey, man, what's that mean? here, and I imagine some of you were a little surprised at the weather over the weekend, uh, especially if you watch my show Friday night, man. An influencer, George Carlin, WLS. And of course, then through radio also, there was Paul Harvey. And Paul Harvey, I would get to listen to the rest of the story. And of course, I couldn't leave out the media of then TV, on there was an influencer such as the show 60 Minutes. Oh, man. So the phrase goes, you want to get nervous, go in the morning and find the cast of 60 Minutes waiting for you. That'd make you nervous. The 60 Minutes show. And of course, at the end of that was the influencer of Andy Rooney. Oh, yeah. Andy. He would say such simple things as, did you ever think we cook pizza and it's round? And even when we print it in and out, it's, it's round. And then we put it in a square box. And of course, before we put it in the square box, we cut it into triangles. I don't know anything offhand that mystifies Americans more than the cotton they put in pill bottles. Andy Rooney. And then there was the comedian who then would get serious. And you kind of went with his flow from being humorous to serious. Red Skeleton. Yes, an influencer to this old man, Red Skeleton. In fact, I would invite every one of you and your relatives, such as your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, to listen to, now it would be, I guess, the streaming, maybe on YouTube, and go to YouTube, Red Skeleton Pledge of Allegiance. Listen to his rendition on the Pledge of Allegiance. I think every one of us, as Americans, should be listening to that. And then we move on then to, there was a TV show. Now, some of you may not 
know of this show or remember this show. But it was called Father Knows Best. Now, he always went to work in a suit. He came back, of course, in a suit. And he had a briefcase. You know what his occupation was? He was an insurance agent. He played the part of an insurance agent on the TV show, Father Knows Best, an influencer. And then an influencer to me was a person who had a very unique name. His name was Zig Ziglar. Yeah, Zig Ziglar. Now, I had all of his, his books, his, his, his first book that I purchased, uh, I was probably about uh, maybe 24, 25. And in fact, reflecting back, I did not purchase it. I received it as a gift. And it was uh, called See You at the Top. See You at the Top. And it would have such phrases that stuck with me, such as stinking thinking, stinking thinking. They're not stoplights, they're opportunity lights. You want to see a traffic jam and not get it anywhere, have no lights, no what we call stoplights. They're not stoplights, <laughs> they're go lights, indeed. And again, the phrase of, of stinking thinking. You have to make a point to look for positive things and take things from a, a, a positive viewpoint. And then he said this, as far as, let's say, his mantra. You can get anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So it's not a me, me type of a, a, of a attitude. It wasn't an I, I phone. It wasn't McDonald's, you deserve, you deserve a break today. It was looking to add value to the other person. What are you doing to add value for the other person? Because if you do, and you do that consistently, it's not a revolution, but an evolution. If you do that, and Zig says, then you're following that mantra and you're feeling well-rounded and so comfortable in doing so, you can get things that you want in life if you help enough, enough other people get what they want in life. Add the value. That came with me. First time I heard Zig Ziglar, I was probably about 29 years old. I went three hours early to see him because I wanted to get a front seat. Went there had my book, See You at the Top. Uh, he, of course, autographed it, wrote a scripture verse, John 5, 15, I believe it was. And again, the way that his presence was of moving around and using some things for his object lesson. And again, his whole theme was then to get rid of that stinking thinking and do a checkup from the neck up was it's not wasn't me, 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 it was. Huh. You can get anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And at your different stations in life, how are you able then to add value to a person's life? The other day I heard about a gentleman speak, a influencer today, not in the modern term, but in my old fashioned term, an influencer today, John Maxwell. John Maxwell come out and said an influencer in his life was, you got it, Zig Ziglar. So, I recommend the streaming of uh, Red Skeleton, the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, even stream Zig Ziglar. See you at the top. It'll be worth, worth your while. Huh. Add value to people. Because you know what? <laughs> I'm rooting for you. You know I am, because we're in this together. And blessed are they who ease the pain of misfortune, for they shall be called, you got it, insurance agents. I remember a teacher that I had. 
Now, I only, I went, I went through the seventh grade. I went to the seventh grade. And I left home when I was 10 years old because I was hungry. And I used to, this is, this is true. I work in the summer and I go to school in the winter. But I had this one teacher who was the principal of the Harrison School in Vincennes, Indiana. To me, this was the greatest teacher, a real sage of, of my time, anyhow. He had such wisdom. And we were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day. And he walked over, this little old teacher, Mr. Laswell was his name. Mr. Laswell, and he says, uh, <clears throat> he says, I've been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word. I, me, an individual, a committee of one, pledge, dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity, allegiance, my love and my devotion to the flag, our standard, O oh glory, a symbol of freedom, wherever she waves, there's respect, because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United, that means that we have all come together. States, individual communities that have united into 48 great states, 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose, and that's love for country. And to the Republic, Republic, a state in which sovereign power is invested in representatives chosen by the people to govern. And government is the people, and it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people for which it stands. One nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation and justice, the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others. For all, for all, which means, boys and girls, it's as much your country as it is mine. And now, boys and girls, let me hear you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance under God. Wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that is a prayer and that would be eliminated from schools too?